You'll do none. You some easy ass work, motherfucker. Yo, what's good with y'all, man? It's the kid, Ego. We out here working. I'm in the media center. I'm an inspiration. Shout out to that, man. That's what we're supposed to do, inspire each other. This is the media center. Like I said, man, we working. That's so all we do is work out here. Get this easy work. They had some food for us here, too. You eating that burial? Watching that live ego? Okay. Yeah, man. We out here. Hey, this Vegas weather is super crazy, though. This Vegas weather, it started uh, when I left the hotel room. It looked like hot as hell, like yesterday. So I was like, okay. Wore me a little t-shirt. And then I get there, and then I go to the press conference, and when I leave, it is so cold. It's, it's cold in here, too. They have, like, the AC on full blast. It started raining. This is, like, some hurricane weather or some shit. Nah, Connor owned that one. What do you mean, nah? I, didn't, I haven't even talked about the press conference. And then what? I didn't really see much of any owning of anything. It was a short, quick press conference. Lloyd just talked regular. He wasn't even turned up. It wasn't like the press store. What are you even talking about? Anyway. Ego, it seems like McGregor was immature at the press conference. Yeah, I mean, he was still kind of in character, but Floyd didn't give him much rhythm. He was just talking like quiet. That's how Floyd was acting at the, the Pacquiao press conference at the Nokia Theater. He was just like real chill, just saying some stuff like, 22 years I, I've been... Floyd's goons got put in their place. What does that mean? Oh, the people in the crowd. I mean, that's Connor. That's what Connor does. Connor, not put people in their place, but Connor is good at the little rebuttals and the, the quick one-liners. So, I mean, it's not really putting someone in the place. Someone's heckling from the crowd, yelling, and he's the attraction on the, the microphone. He didn't really put them in their place. I don't even know who the fuck was saying it. So if you put someone in your place, to me, I, I think you like you check somebody. He didn't. He just. Uh, he's the only one with the mic, so it's not like the other person could have responded or had a great response. I mean, he's on the mic and the guy's heckling, so he just said, "Shut up, bitch." I mean, that's, that's not really putting any goons in place or whatever. Y'all yeah, be giving too much credit for like little shit. That's. I mean, what are you supposed to do? I've seen comedians do that. They'd be like, "Shut the fuck up." I mean, someone's heckling you. They're not there's only a couple things you could even say possibly. So, yeah, I didn't really see him putting in anybody in their place. He just said, "Shut up, bitch." so I can talk. Bro, be for real? I'm always for real. You shouldn't subscribe to this channel if you don't want me to be for real. If you don't want me to be for real, then don't watch this channel. But uh, I'm picking Mayweather. I, I mean, like I said, certain guys who are proven, this is Mayweather sport, two years and no. I got an interview from someone else who sparred with him. I already talked to someone else who sparred with him. So I just think this overall, I mean, like most people, this is Mayweather's Field. If it was the octagon or bowling alley and all this other stuff y'all be saying, then that might be different. But it's not. He's fighting Conor McGregor at a weight he's competed at. Even though he's on a two-year layoff, it's his sport. This is the sport Mayweather competes at, and it's not the sport Conor competes at. So for that reason, that's one big reason. Another big reason is Floyd is surgical. And I, I really feel somebody, Paulie, said something that I really disagree with. He was saying that, why, you're like, Mayweather, why are you doing Jimmy Kimmel a week out? Because a lot of people have this notion that that Floyd is slacking because he he, he posted that, hey, I'm going I'm to go to the strip club. I'm going to my strip club every day this week up until the fight, girl collection, and he's doing spots on Jimmy Kimmel. I don't know what Paulie's talking about. That's normal. That's normal. You basis, bro? You don't even know how to speak English. What do you mean, you basis? What does basis mean? You basis? You can't spell. If you can't spell, don't diss me. Straight up. But anyway, I mean, doing Jimmy Kimmel, 
I seen Pacquiao, I think, do Jimmy Kimmel. Conor McGregor do Jimmy Kimmel before fights or or late night talk show. So I, I don't really. Yeah, he said you basis. What, what the fuck does that even mean? <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I'm not you basis. I'm I'm educated. So if you're gonna diss me, at least come with something. Hey man, you're being basis. The fuck does that even mean? But um, Floyd doing Jimmy Kimmel going to his strip club. That that's to me that's like that's typical Floyd. That's him camouflaging shit. You know what I'm saying? I don't for one minute believe that he's totally underestimating Conor McGregor and he doesn't care and he's just looking over. If anything, I think it might be the other way around. Conor McGregor, he got the Irish blood. Conor McGregor, he's prideful. He knows he's never been stopped in the UFC, which he believes is much deadlier. And oh, I got I got shin bones bouncing off my head and things like that. But at the end of the day, you're coming over to a completely different sport. So if anybody's underestimating, I think it might be Connor, because Connor is, to me, entering the fight like Sergey Kovalev did with Ward. You think, oh, it's Andre Ward. I can look at his knockouts on box rack. I can see his fight, and he don't have as many knockouts as me. So Kovalev went in that bitch thinking that Ward couldn't hurt him. He even said that. He's like, he's like Andre Ward. He it's like a 15-year-old girl, and then he got stopped by the 15-year-old girl. SOG also son of girl or whatever you want to call him that that dude stopped him so to me I don't buy Floyd Mayweather is taking this lightly I don't buy Floyd Mayweather is gonna take a dive for uh, more money in the rematch because a lot of people keep saying that to me that, hey do you think Floyd would take a dive why would you take a dive to a, to the motherfucker who hasn't even competed in your sport you know what I'm saying if you're gonna dive why did not you dive with Canelo's ass and Canelo would be the even bigger of a star if he never lost to Mayweather. You know what I'm saying? And he had the size and, and some skill to possibly beat Floyd if, if he fought right. Or, you know what I'm saying? It wouldn't have looked far-fetched. You know, Canelo's not a bum. You know what I mean? Why didn't you dive with Cotto or Oscar De La Hoya or even Maidana? Why are you going to wait till the person that doesn't even compete in boxing comes over and then all of a sudden take a dive? That doesn't make sense to me because that would be, to me, if, if I'm Floyd and I've been undefeated for 20 years in, in the sport of boxing and then all of a sudden the, the, I get knocked out or take a dive or it, just lose in general to the person from outside of sport, that's going to make you look worse because people think this is a mismatch. People are saying this fight shouldn't happen or, or Connor has no shot. So if you lose to the person with no shot, I mean, that would, that would definitely impact your legacy how it ended because they're like, wow, you, you lost to a dude who doesn't even who fights but he doesn't fight as a boxer so if you're going to take a dive i don't see why he would end his career like this like oh yeah let me just take a dive for for more, more money in a rematch no i don't see it anything can happen yeah i mean you can say that about anything yeah i can walk outside and get struck by lightning twice i mean anything can happen that's i mean god forbid no one wants that to happen but i mean that, that anything can happen shit that's I deal with like, honestly, I look at boxing based on like variables and probability. Anything can happen. I've been surprised in some fights, but if you go check my track record, I've been more on with my predictions than I've been off. You know, I might not get the exact round number or whatever, but if you listen to the detail, I'm getting, I, I got a, I think I got most of the major ones except for Danny Garcia, Keith Thurman. And I said, be a decision some of y'all motherfuckers was talking about this fight would um, end by knockout and Thurman was gonna knock Danny's head off and all that that didn't happen I mean he, he might have buzzed Danny in the first round then he's then he just you know what I mean did what he had to do to win but it was no knockouts anything like that so I'm, I'm about to go to these media workouts I was about to ride with, uh, shout out to Michelle Joy Phelps, uh, boxing behind the gloves. Um, she has someone like an assistant working with her. I was gonna ride over there, but they got a shuttle, so I'll probably just take the shuttle. You know your shit. Um, Tank's fighting a guy named Fonseca. I don't really know much about him. He's undefeated, um, decent power, looks like from his box rec. And I mean, that's what it is. But I don't, I, I don't know if that was the initial opponent. That I think they were trying to get Orlando Salido. It didn't happen, so they move on to the next person. 
And I mean, realistically, with Tank, this is his third fight in the year. Realistically, name some, name one fighter who's fought three times in a year, and they've all three been killers. Nobody. There is nobody that's done that. Not Vasil Lomachenko. Not no. Like, let's say Lomachenko fights Rigging out in December. That'll be two fights. And let, was Jason Sosa? The, no. That'll be third fight. But Jason Sosa and Miguel Madiaga, those fights were, he was easily favored to win. Connor did not do that this year. He hasn't even fought this year. What are you talking about? And I'm talking about boxing anyway, but Connor hasn't fought since his girlfriend had the baby, so you're lying. I said, name somebody this year who is on schedule or has fought three times and they've been three killers. And you couldn't because that's not what happens in boxing. You know what I'm saying? Not every fight's going to be your, your toughest fight. I mean, the motherfucking tank just got a title in January. You got to you gotta be realistic. You know what I mean? It's not about ducking or dodging. It's about being realistic for your career. You want to keep some money in the kid's pocket so he don't, you know what I mean, go the Broner route and, like, get distracted with things outside of boxing with a little bit of money. Yeah, I'm not a little bit. I don't know how much money he has, but you guys get what I'm saying. He's not Conor McGregor, Floyd Mayweather status with the money yet. So, you know what I mean, keep the kid active. Keep him, like, in shape because he missed weight for the Liam Walsh fight, or at first he did. So, you know what I mean, the more frequent you fight, the easier it is to stay on track with your weight. So, you know what I mean, just do stuff like that. Just fighting an undefeated guy, not a big name. It is what it is. Why am I doing the money dance? Oh shit, thank you. Do the money dance. Christopher Lee just donated $10 to the channel and to the movement. Yeah, man. I'm gonna get that computer so I can be even more um, official. Like, I just need that. I just need to upgrade that computer. Super chat from $10 for Chris Lee. He said, hey, did Troy King try to be a sparring partner for Floyd? Um, he would have been good. Southpaw Troy look big in MMA background. What do you think? That's a good, yeah. I mean, obviously, you see, people, people keep asking me about Troy King. And the reality of the situation, he's coming off of surgery. So he's not, I don't think he's been sparring anyone, let alone TBE. You know what I mean? So like, if this fight would've took place last year or something, then that definitely would've been good, but he's not in the position to spar, to my knowledge, from last time I talked to him, he's not really in the position to spar anybody right now because he had a detached retina and he's recovering from that. But I agree with you, Troy King is big, size-wise, pause, and he's a southpaw, and he studies this student of the game, and he did do that fight, the amateur MMA fight, so that would've been a good look, but he's just not healthy enough to spar anyone 49 and 1 I mean that's cool we're gonna find out on Saturday I'm in the place to be too we're gonna see if it's anybody can say 49 and 1 it's either gonna be him or it's gonna be him buy your own computer sponger first of all you misspelled sponger second of all who talks like that Third of all, I already have my own computer. It's right over there. It's a MacBook. I got a MacBook, you broke bum. Shut up. Like Connor said in there. Shut up. All y'all do is talk. Like, you know what I'm saying? Buy your own computer, man. I spend more money, like, coming to these trips than you make at, at your job at Kmart. Shut up. Oh, and one. We're going to find out, man. I'll be trying to ruffle feathers and stuff. I mean, look at like this. Floyd's either going to win or he's going to lose. Just like any fight. You have two people. They're going to win or they're going to lose. And there's nothing really even to talk about. The fight's so close. The fight is super close. Hey, somebody have the time. West Coast time. California, Los Angeles. Bay Area, San Francisco. Las Vegas. I'm picking Floyd. Floyd, I... I mean, I'm, I'm interviewing his sparring partners. You'll see, uh, shout out to my dude, Daquan Mays, Southpaw. He was brought in, because Connor's a Southpaw, boxer puncher. I just interviewed him. Uh, my dude, Jose Vargas. I've interviewed a lot of his people, like people that have been in this particular camp. In the past, I've interviewed uh, Maurice Lee. Shout out to the Lee brothers. 
and the, yeah, the funny thing is all them cats is way younger than Floyd and like I'm not I'm talking about like younger than younger than a lot of people and like you know what I mean Lomachenko's like 29 Canelo's like 27 Broner's like up there 28 29 these dudes are young like damn near 25 and under and all these motherfuckers is telling me the same exact thing about Floyd so I'm just inclined to be that believe that now to just to be transparent I haven't interviewed anybody from Conor McGregor's that spar with him that I know of, but Deshaun Johnson's kind of speaking on it a little bit on his on his social medias and stuff, and I, I just believe what I, what what the people are telling me, like because I'm interviewing them in separate environments in separate cities. One interview was in New York, one's in Vegas, another one's in Vegas, but at different times, and they're all telling me the same exact thing about Floyd. Oh, there's a super chat. Sorry. See, I'd be rambling. Do the money dance. Oh, five dollar super chat from Marco underscore is underscore king. Thank you for that five dollar super chat. It says, "What's up, ego? Do you think the karate stance that McGregor has will be effective against Mayweather?" I mean, I don't really know what the karate stance. I seen him do it at the face off, but what is that? What is that? How does that relate to boxing? I don't really see what the, what the fuck that's going to do in, in a boxing ring. I mean, if he tries to squat, I think, to me, <laughs> that actually makes it worse because everything, unless, except for when Mayweather had them booster shoes on, Connor looks considerably taller. Like, you know what I mean? Visibly taller. So, if you're in a, in a karate, like a karate stance like that, you negate your height. So, to me, that makes it worse. You, in boxing, why not? If you're Robert Easter, you're Paul Williams, and you're way taller than everyone in your division, why not use your height to your advantage? But not everyone does that. Not everyone fights like Lennox Lewis or Klitschko and uses their height. So to me, I don't I don't know if Connor how he's gonna fight really, because nobody knows. He, he hasn't boxed like that. Um, but if he does do a karate stance where he's like, you know I me mean, on some Bruce Lee shit, like he said, then he's gonna be bending at the knees and it's gonna make him closer to Floyd's height. I don't think that's really gonna offset him. Another reason I'm picking Floyd, for me, Connor, I can tell this is, to me, this is bad. If you really watch boxing, Connor, I can see mistakes he's making from pictures. Like not even from being, you know what I mean? UFC, they're like tight locked and tight lipped about the sparring. That's what Paulie Malignaggi was pissed off because everything that was coming out about him was on some bullshit like he was getting fucked up but what i noticed is even in pictures i see errors like he doesn't have his uh his glove up after he throws a punch you know what i mean you got to bring that back home protect that temple mayweather's too fast his reflexes are too good and mayweather coined that term you make a mistake then you gotta pay and all that so i see little stuff like when connor's hitting the heavy bag some of the punches look wide or he's not bringing his, his glove back up, stuff like that. So little things like that, Mayweather's gonna pick and dice up. So Conor's best chance, you know, this is gonna sound crazy. Conor McGregor's best chance is also his worst chance. Mayweather's used to bigger guys, he's used to strong guys, he's used to guys who try to come at him like he ain't shit and he finds a way. But this is gonna sound weird when I say it, but if you really study boxing, you, you might understand what I'm saying, but what I was gonna say is, Connor's best shot at winning is also his worst shot, if that makes sense. Meaning, the, be the best and only way for me to see him winning would be to use his youth, his strength, and his size. He does have power in both gloves, and just hurt Mayweather to the point where it's like, has to get stopped, you know what I mean? And, he, and, and I think the sooner the better, because as anybody, Unless, you know what I'm saying, you're on something. And that's disappointing about John Jones, but unless you're on something, um, EPO or some, or some kind of TED, everybody's gonna get tired naturally. So your power is gonna dwindle down, especially if Floyd starts picking you off and jabbing to the solar plex and taking some air from you. So anybody's gonna get tired. So his best chance is to be aggressive, but that's also his worst chance because Floyd, I think, is gonna be expecting that. He's gonna expect Connor to make good with all his promises, get frustrated,
come at him crazy. Look at the fights where he's had challenges. Zab Judah, Marcos Maidana, Miguel Cotto, and try his best to emulate that. Connor said something like he studied everything about Floyd. I need the time from somebody because I got to go to this, um, the, across the street to the casino. So somebody tell me the West Coast time, please. I cannot see on my phone while I'm live streaming because I got to wrap this up so I can go get that, that footage for y'all. All right, I gotta go, it's 4.38. Yeah, cause um, Tank Davis is gonna be there. I really wanna talk to him, chop it up, and get some footage of him. Thank you guys for the time. I'll probably do come back and do another live chat. Check the channel. I interviewed my Mayweather sparring partner. The press conference was short, but those videos are up. The face off, Conor McGregor says that he's on some Bruce Lee shit. It's going down. Boxing Ego, shout out to the Super Chats. I think we got two right here. We working, man. That's all I can say. You know what I mean? 26. This. This. 9 p.m. Shout out to another Super Chat. Do this money dance. I gotta go, though. Uh, Dalton Judge, $5. Thank you. He said, what up, dude? I see you working. LOL. What do you think about Crawford's tweet about ESPN promotion of him? I haven't seen it. Someone told me something, but you guys have to fill me in. I'll try to make a video about it. Um, I heard he was upset. I, I didn't see it, so I can't really speak on it. And if he's upset that the promotion was lacking, then um, I don't blame him. You know why? Because I was at the fight. I actually spent my money and went out there, had a great time. And if you notice, there weren't a lot of people even covering that fight. Like people like that cover fights normally, I didn't even see them. Like, you know I me, mean? people that I see here right now in Vegas, didn't see any of them. I seen a few people like Dan Rayfield, and, uh, the dude that used to work at USA Today, Mike Coppinger. But I didn't see a lot of people that I normally see at these fights. So I, I got to read what he said, but I, I don't blame Crawford. Well, everyone has an opinion, so if you disagree, I gotta educate myself to what he said first. I don't know when I'm gonna go live again, cause I gotta see, this is, all this stuff you never really know, you know what I'm saying? It's, um, cause he might run into somebody. Michelle Joy Phelps, say hi. Hi. She's working hard. She got some food. She was kind of angry. I was, uh, she was angry I early. That fondue, you know what I'm oh, that, oh, <laughs> killed that fondue. Now, nursing this here stomach. Tell them how cold it is in here. It's freezing as hell. We had to move our seats. You know what, though? It could be worse, right? Because it's hot as hell outside. I'm thinking of yesterday, but we're just sitting. We're sitting. Every corner is, is like a AC just blaring on everybody. Make sure you guys follow behind the gloves. Oh, thanks. She's working hard. She got videos. She interviewed Polly Malinaji. We're out here working. Thank you. Make sure you guys follow. I'm out of here.